Amber Hagerman was born on November 25, 1986, in Arlington, Texas, and was the daughter of Richard Hagerman and Donna Whitson. On the afternoon of January 13, 1996, Donna took the then nine-year-old Amber and her five-year-old brother Rick to visit their grandparents. In the afternoon, the children took their bikes and went to play in the parking lot of an abandoned supermarket in the area. It was very common for children and teenagers to meet there to play and talk. The kids used the market access ramps to skate and cycle, as was the case with the Hageman kids. Rick returned home before his sister, who wanted to stay and spend more time playing. When he arrived back, his parents were a little worried that they hadn't come back together. After telling his mother that Amber had gone to play at the market, Donna urged him to go get his sister and bring her home. He obeyed his mother and returned to the parking lot to call his sister, but upon arriving, Amber had disappeared. He then returned home, said he hadn't found her, and everyone immediately left to look for her. The grandfather of the children took his car through several streets before reaching the supermarket. Arriving there, he saw several police officers at the scene and realised that something strange was happening. Minutes before, the police had received a call. 911, good afternoon. Uh, hello, my name's Jimmy Cable. I'm calling because something really weird happened here and um, yeah, I think you guys need to get over here fast. What happened, sir? I, I saw a man pick a girl off the street and throw in the car, drive away. I don't think this man was anyone in the family because she started screaming really loud, kicking him, trying to run, but she couldn't. Sir, give me the address of the place, please. Jimmy Kevill, 78, made the call. Because he was an elderly man and it had happened a little far from where he was, he couldn't see in detail any information that could help the police. But of course, he made the call and that does not detract from his help. Jimmy described the vehicle as a dark blue or black pickup truck and said the man looked about 5 foot 9 and between 30 and 40 years old. But because everything happened very fast, he couldn't get a proper look at him. As this had only happened a few minutes ago, the police quickly mobilised to try to find Amber. More than 50 agents searched the region. Searches happened daily and in addition to the police, the family members also hardly slept, making their own rounds. On the 17th, four days later, a man walking his dog near the Forest Hill Apartments in North Arlington, five miles from the site of the kidnapping, saw at the edge of the stream the body of a girl with no clothes on except a sock on her right foot, and immediately called the police. In the identification of the body, it was confirmed that the girl was Amber Hagerman, because she had been in running water for two days, especially because it had stormed. Any possible evidence was eliminated from the body. There is no guarantee that she was left there. She may have been carried by the current for a few days before stopping there. Virtually no evidence could be collected. Amber's parents were shocked by the news. Over the next few weeks, over 6,000 pieces of information, including suspects, theories, witnesses, family members, were investigated and absolutely nothing was discovered. Disappearances of children, unfortunately, are not isolated cases. More than 800,000 children are reported missing each year worldwide. The speed of information is fundamental to a possible rescue. Amber's parents collected signatures in hopes of forcing the Texas legislature to pass tougher laws to protect children. In addition, a mother named Diane Simone called a local radio station that commented on this matter and gave the following idea. You can speak now, Diana Simone. So, I followed this case a lot on the TV and in the newspapers, and I felt very moved because I'm also the mother of a child, and I, oh, I don't know what I would do if, if it happened to me, you know, if something like that had happened to me, so... I was thinking these days, the government here in the United States fills our field of view with weather alerts. You know, there are days at every corner we see, you know, warning of rain and a storm that is about to arrive. Like, why don't they use 
the same means of communication to let us know that something like this is happening, you know. Like, when they have an alert, they stop everything, you know, on television, on the radio. They trigger a huge noise, and everyone is alert to protect themselves. So I was thinking if a similar warning were used for everyone to try to protect a kidnapped child, I think we could do something for someone. This mother's words reverberated throughout the country, and nine months later, in October 1996, the Amber Alert System was created. In addition to the homage made to Little Amber, the backronym is the first letters of the phrase America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. Alerts interrupt radio and TV programming, appear on transport signs, on digital billboards, and also arrive as text messages on cell phones. For an Amber Alert to be activated, there are four requirements, and they are quickly identified. 1. Police must confirm that there is, in fact, a kidnapping. 2. The child must be at risk of serious injury or death. 3. There must exist sufficient description that identifies the child, the kidnapper, or the vehicle. And 4. The child must be under 17 years old. The second rule exists to eliminate possible situations where, for example, the parents are separated and in shared custody, as some of them take a long time to bring their child back to the other parent's house, and this wouldn't necessarily be the sort of emergency Amber Alert is intended for. With these established rules, there are cases in which they serve more to eliminate unnecessary alerts than to actually alert real cases, and so not all states in the US follow these criteria to the letter. In 2016, 20 years after the kidnapping, Diane Simone, the mother who came up with the idea of the new Amber Alert system, gave a TED talk and said that, before Amber Alert, the problem wasn't that people didn't see kidnappings happening or see the culprits or vehicles involved, they just weren't aware that that was what they were looking at. Now, the alert system lets the public know in the crucial first hours of a kidnapping that one has taken place, and the people know what they need to look out for. Donna, Amber's mother, said she is very proud of the system, but at the same time, knowing it was created after her daughter's abduction causes some pain. This case took place in 1996, and there is still no concrete information on the leads of the person or persons responsible for this crime. Because of this, unfortunately, the case remains unsolved to this day.